Scrum is the most well-known agile technique and is frequently used by software development teams. According to the 15th Annual State of Agile Report, the growth of agile adoption within software development teams increased from 37% in 2020 to 86% in 2021. Scrum helps various teams work together to obtain the desired results. So, in this video, we are going to talk about a quick guide to Scrum meetings. Before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. We will start our session with a brief understanding of what Scrum is. Then, we will understand the different Scrum roles and the different types of Scrum meetings. Moving on, we will discuss why Scrum meetings are important and then conclude the session by knowing how to improve Scrum meetings. I hope the agenda was clear. Before we start with our session, if you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about Agile Project Management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Agile Project Management Certification Training on Certified Scrum Product Owner, Professional Scrum Product Owner, Professional Scrum Master, and Agile Scrum Master. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. So, without further ado, let us get started with our first topic, what is Scrum? Scrum is an Agile development framework that uses iterative and progressive methods to build applications or products. It is an evolution of Agile management. Now, to give a brief introduction to Agile methodology. Agile methodology is a development and testing strategy that encourages continuous iteration throughout the project's development life cycle. It is basically dividing the entire project into smaller, more manageable parts so that, usable software or applications can be developed and released faster. In this methodology, all the software development lifecycle phases such as planning, building, integrating, testing, deploying, maintaining are done simultaneously in one iteration or development cycle. Scrum is a part of Agile methodology. Its technique is based on a set of well-defined tasks and activities that have to be implemented to develop the products. Scrum helps teams adapt to the user's changing requirements by reprioritizing the important tasks and releasing the software in shorter and faster cycles while allowing the team to learn and improve. Scrum can also be known as a methodology for handling complex adaptive problems while creatively and productively building and delivering high-value products. Now, Scrum is frequently handled in quick and temporary chunks, term sprints. Sprint is a time period usually spanned from anywhere about two to four weeks, in which the Scrum team is expected to complete a set of tasks. Each sprint is its own entity, meaning it provides a full outcome. An iteration or variant of the final product is to be delivered to the client when needed, with a set amount of work done. So, I guess you have some idea about Sprint and Scrum. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the different Scrum roles to understand what part each role plays in Scrum meetings. The responsibilities assigned to people working in the Agile framework are one of the most important aspects of Scrum, and Scrum roles are quite different from that of a traditional methodology. There are three major Scrum roles, the product owner, the Scrum master, and the development team. Let us talk about them one by one in detail. First, let us talk about the product owner. The product owner represents the customers and the stakeholders. There is usually only one product owner who communicates the team's overall mission and vision for the product. They make the decisions on product development, define and prioritize tasks, monitor the product backlog, and review the completed work after each development cycle. The product owner should understand the consumer and see the value that the Scrum team is giving to the client. The product owner must also consider the demands of the organization's other stakeholders. As a result, the product owner must consider all of the inputs and prioritize the tasks. This is most likely their most crucial role because competing priorities and unclear instructions will not only limit the team's performance but may also compromise the important trust connection that the business has with the development team. This was about the product owner. Next, let us talk about the Scrum Master. They are a Scrum team member who makes sure that the team works according to the Scrum rules. In addition, the Scrum Master should ensure that the team performs at their best. It might include removing roadblocks, organizing meetings, and assisting the product owner with the product backlog. The Scrum Master is a servant leader, which indicates a helpful leadership style. They decide what the team member's tasks are on a daily basis. They assist the product owner by better understanding and communicating value, managing the backlog, planning work with the team, and breaking down tasks to give the most effective learning. The Scrum Master assists the development team by assisting them to self-organize, focus on outcomes, and handle blockages. The Scrum Master also assists the organization as a whole, assisting them in understanding Scrum and creating a Scrum-friendly workplace. So this was a brief introduction to Scrum Master. Now, 
Let us talk about the development team. The development team includes individuals working in a team who do the work and develop the products. The development team does not only include developers. It also includes designers, testers, and all the various roles required to complete the project. The team should self-organize in order to make choices and complete tasks. For example, consider a development team to be a production support crew and are called in late at night for some problem. The development team may make decisions and provide a solution to the situation at hand, like the production support team. Self-organization does not mean disregarding the organization, rather, it means enabling those, closest to the job to do what is necessary to address the problem. So, these are the three prominent roles in a scrum team. Now, let us move on to our next topic and understand the different types of scrum meetings. The different types of scrum meetings are also known as scrum ceremonies. These ceremonies give a framework for teams to complete work in a structured way, enable teams to communicate effectively and increase the team's overall efficiency. So, there are four scrum ceremonies, sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. Let us understand each of the ceremonies one by one in detail. First is sprint planning. Sprint planning is a scrum ceremony that ensures the team is prepared to do each sprint's necessary tasks. This ceremony takes place at the start of a new sprint and is intended to bring the product owner and development team together to evaluate the product backlog. Now, for those of who, who do not know what product backlog is. A product backlog is a prioritized list of tasks for the development team based on the roadmap and its objectives. So, sprint planning prepares the entire team for success during the sprint. First, the product owner will arrive with a prioritized product backlog at the meeting. Next, they debate each issue with the development team, and the group assesses the effort required to do the work. Next, the development team will create a sprint projection indicating how much work from the product backlog the team can finish. This volume of work is then added to the sprint backlog. Next, during the sprint planning, the team should discuss and create a sprint backlog that includes all of the tasks they intend to finish by the end of the sprint, which is known as the sprint goal. This goal needs to be agreed upon by the entire team and should include the amount of work that can be done by the end of the sprint. Now, the entire scrum team, product owner, development team and scrum master should be a part of this sprint planning. Most scrum ceremonies are proportional to the length of the sprint. For sprint planning, the meeting should be twice as long as the sprint, but in hours. For example, if the sprint is one week, then the sprint planning should be around two hours, and if the sprint is two weeks, then the sprint planning should be around four hours, and so on. Talking about some of benefits of scrum planning. It allow the team to agree on sprint priorities ahead of the start of the sprint. Next, it provides everyone on the team with a clear idea of their roles in the upcoming sprint. Then, it allows the team to understand the sprint goal and plan their tasks accordingly. Next, it brings the entire team together, and the team members work collaboratively towards the expected results. And, most of the risks are analyzed beforehand so the teams know what preventive and corrective actions to take when a problem arises. This was about sprint planning. Next, let us talk about the next scrum ceremony, daily scrum. The daily scrum is a meeting where the team discusses the task completed the previous day, decides the day's tasks, and discusses any problem the team members face. This ceremony gives the team a regular opportunity to gather and discuss individual progress toward the sprint goal. This allows the team to communicate with each other at least once a day. If the team members have any problem, the scrum master must understand the problem and find a solution for that problem. The purpose of stand-up is to quickly notify everyone on the team about what is going on. It is not a comprehensive status meeting. The tone should be light-hearted and entertaining while yet being educational. Ask each team member to respond to the following questions. What did I do the day before? What am I going to work on today? And is there anything impeding my progress? There is implied accountability in disclosing the work you performed yesterday in front of your teams. Nobody wants a team member who is always doing the same thing and not making any progress. Now, this meeting is for the development team and the scrum master. The product owner is a non-mandatory attendee. However, the product owner can join the call if they want to know how the team progresses. Furthermore, this is a short meeting and can last up to one hour, depending on the size of the team. Next, talking about the benefits of daily scrum are. It assists the team in identifying problems so that they are resolved faster. Next, allows the team to make small corrections on a regular basis so they stay on the right path and work towards a common sprint goal. Then, Daily stand-up creates trust among the team members, as they communicate every day, and there is transparency within the team. Next, 
With daily stand-up meetings, the Scrum Master can ensure that all the team members are doing their daily tasks. This was about daily Scrum. Next, let us talk about the next Scrum Ceremony, Sprint Review. The Sprint Review is a Scrum Ceremony in which the work done during the Sprint is shown to the stakeholders. The Sprint Review is usually held at the end of each Sprint. As the name suggests, it is a review meeting that allows the development team to display all of the work that has been completed. The stakeholders then review the end product and mention any modification. Most importantly, all of the work displayed during the sprint review should be completed and should meet the sprint goal discussed earlier. The sprint review's goal is not to deliver a status update but rather to highlight the value the project brings to the company. As a result, the work must be completely demonstrable during this ceremony, as its other purpose is to obtain feedback from stakeholders on the work completed during the sprint. If the input is accepted, It is added to a new product backlog and reviewed and prioritized during the following sprint planning session. Iteration review is a chance to highlight the team's efforts. They might be in a more informal manner, such as demo Fridays, or in a more formal meeting structure. This is the opportunity for the team to celebrate their achievements, show off work completed during the iteration, and receive rapid feedback from project stakeholders. Work must be completely verifiable and fulfill the team's quality level to be regarded as complete and ready to present in the review. Now, as this is a review call, it should include external stakeholders, upper management, and the scrum team, the development team, the scrum master, the product owner. In addition, the developers from another team and customers are also part of sprint review. The product owner and scrum master should discuss and decide who should participate in sprint review. Next, the sprint review can last maximum up to four hours, depending on the products. Next talking about the benefits of sprint review. Direct feedback is given by the stakeholders to the developers so that they can recommend any improvement. The product owner can plan these for the next sprint. Next, instead of anonymous reports, stakeholders receive lively information on the development. This makes dealing with the results much easier. Then, ideas for additional features can be discussed and created together. Next, customer feedback is discussed in the sprint review, which will be extremely beneficial for product improvement. This was about sprint review. Next, let us talk about the next Scrum Ceremony, Sprint Retrospective. The Sprint Retrospective is the last Scrum Ceremony on the list. It allows the team to reflect on the work that has just been accomplished and identify areas for improvement. Following the Sprint Review, the Scrum team should look back and reflect on the work they have completed and explore methods to improve that work. To find areas of improvement, we have a Sprint Retrospective. It provides a platform for the Scrum team to discuss what is doing well, what may be improved and some ideas for improvements. In this meeting, the teams can discuss what went and did not go well in the previous sprint. What could we do differently to make things better and so on. Agile is all about collecting quick feedback to improve the product and development culture. Retrospectives assist the team in determining what went well and what did not. Retrospectives aren't primarily about complaining without taking action. Instead, Retrospectives are used to determine what is working so that the team can continue to focus on those areas. Find out what isn't working and utilize the time to come up with innovative alternatives and a plan of action. Continuous improvement is what maintains and drives progress in an agile team, and retrospectives play an important role in that. So, the attendees of these meetings are the development team and the scrum master. Now, the product owner is an optional member. Also, The sprint retrospective meeting can last anywhere from 1.5 hours to 3 hours. Next, the benefits of sprint retrospective are. It allows the team to reflect on their work and celebrate their accomplishments after each sprint. Next, it enables the team to continue to improve their processes in the next sprint. Then, it gives all members a sense of ownership by allowing them to express their ideas for development. Next, It assists project managers in keeping the project on track by resolving priorities and directions. Then, it aids in the early identification of risk and issue variables and promotes transparency and trust among team members, which strengthens team spirit. So this was about Sprint Retrospective and Sprint Ceremony. Now, let us understand some benefits of Scrum meetings or why Scrum meetings are important. Usually, the Scrum team operates on a tight schedule because each sprint lasts for about four weeks. Therefore, It is very important to ensure that the entire team moves towards the same goal and works to get the desired results. So, the following are some points explaining why Scrum meetings are important. First, it helps get a better understanding. Scrum meetings help the entire team understand what needs to be done and how to progress and provide each team member with an understanding of what roles they play in the sprint. 
Second, it identify potential problems before they become serious. Any problems bottlenecks arising in the sprint can be discussed in the scrum meetings. In this way, the entire team knows about the problems, and they can collectively come up with a solution. Also, if some other team members face the same problem, they will know how the problem was solved last time and can implement the same solution. When the problem is discussed right when it occurs, it will cause less damage, and it is easier to fix before it causes any serious damage. Third, it allows the team to reflect on their efforts once the sprint is completed. Sprint retrospective takes place once the sprint is completed. It is a meeting where each team member can analyze the area of improvement. So, this gives the team enough time to reflect on their work done in the sprint and think about how to improve the processes in the next sprint. Fourth, it helps in making a better analysis. When the team members meet and discuss every day in Scrum, it is easier to analyze and adjust the budget and timeline of the project based on the team's performance and capabilities. In addition, the development team is more likely to give realistic project requirements estimates than the product owner because the teams are the ones working on the product. So Scrum meetings help the entire Scrum team, the product owner, the Scrum master, and the development team to sit together and decide on the requirements, cost, timelines, and other project decisions. Fifth, increased collaboration among the teams and ownership. Scrum meetings help the team members communicate on a daily basis and get to know each other better. This creates a collaborative and better working environment. Also, when the project's responsibilities are distributed among the team members, they get a sense of ownership of the project and start working on the sprint goal as their own goals. So, these were some of the reasons why scrum meetings are important. Now, let us discuss some ways, how to improve scrum meetings. As we have discussed before, scrum meetings are very important to understand the requirements and project or sprint goals. In order to improve the efficiency of these scrum meetings, certain steps and practices are followed. So, let us discuss some of them one by one. First, define a proper purpose. If you want to keep your scrum meetings on track and effective, make sure to establish a clear goal ahead of time. Before everyone attends the meeting, describe the sort of scrum meeting that will take place, attendees of the meeting, and how long it will last. Second, maintain continuous changes. If you are a scrum master, Try to keep the Scrum interactive and informative. When the Scrum meeting is the same every day, it gets monotonous and boring. So try to change something in the meeting. For example, change the order in which the updates are taken, discuss some fun facts, and so on. There is always an opportunity for improvement, even the most successful projects generally have something Scrum members wish they could change. Third, stick to the sprint goal. It is critical that everyone engaging in the sprint focus on the same goal. During sprints, particularly daily scrums, each team member should share how they contribute to the overall goal. Receiving these regular updates keeps the objective in mind and offers a complete view of your team's chances of success. Fourth, follow the time frame. No one likes a meeting that lasts too long, especially a scrum meeting. It is essential to specify the length of each scrum meeting so that it does not take more of the valuable time that the team might be spending on their actual task for the day. Make sure all the team members understand how important it is to be on time and be prepared. These were some of the things that can improve Scrum meetings. Fifth, ensure that attendees arrive prepared. According to management consultants, all team members who attend Scrum sessions should be prepared. Just because the meeting is only 15 minutes long doesn't imply employees may turn up unprepared for the meeting. The product owner should have a rough draft of the future sprint goals as well as any potential problems. Members of the team should also come prepared with concerns and requests for assistance. Without this forward planning, no one will be able to tackle the difficulties. Sixth, your team should not be overworked. Check that team members can handle the burden when they take on projects from the backlog. If there is too much to accomplish, the Scrum Master may need to step in and reduce their tasks and responsibilities. The Scrum Master's responsibility is to ensure that teams proceed at a sustainable speed. Teams who are pushed to move as quickly as they can at every sprint or are not given enough time between sprints to recover may burn out and either become unproductive or depart. To conclude the session, I would like to say that these scrum ceremonies are intended to provide outcomes, regardless of the project management tool or product you are currently working on. These meetings create structure and work effectively when the entire team is on board and has a shared understanding about all the ceremonies. But, again, scrum is only a framework for delivering software in an agile way. So, this was a quick guide to Scrum meetings. With this, we have come to an end of this video, I hope it was helpful. Comment your thoughts in the section below. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell, 
never to miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Also, if this has spiked your interest and you want to learn more about Scrum and its practices, check out Agile Scrum Master Certification Training by Invensys Learning which will help learn how to facilitate, coach, and enable cross-functional and self-managed teams as a Scrum Master. You can also check our other courses such as Certified Scrum Master, Professional Scrum Master, SAFE Scrum Master and Agile Scrum Foundation. We at Invensys Learning, provide interactive instructor-led certification training by trainers with rich domain experience and expertise. We also provide mock tests to make you confident while appearing for the certification exams, access to mock tests and case studies prepared by the industry experts and personalized LMS with lifetime access that contain course resources. Thank you. Have a nice day.